Sometimes it's very easy to see why certain video games get banned. It could be their overabundance of violence, their approach to sexual situations, or just having more disgusting language than a script written by Ash. Seriously, her takes are utter garbage. However, there are a few games that have been pulled from shelves for reasons that you wouldn't immediately be able to identify. From misinterpreted death threats to worries over street art, I've compiled a little list which delves into the odd times the offence was caused. With this in mind, I'm Jules, your one per list wonder, and these are nine bizarre reasons reasons why popular video games were banned. Number 9. Football Manager 2005 we begin with a game which on paper looks like the least offensive title you could think of. Firstly, it's football, and the only violent thing about the beautiful game is the fans, and they're not even a big factor in the Football Manager series. I mean, sure, they pay the wages, but you don't really see them louting about. In all other areas, the game is just basically Microsoft Excel, just you dealing with strategies, business emails, and looking at financial documents. In fact, it sounds about as detached from football as your mum is from her emotions as she takes her eighth lover of the night. Oof, that was a bit dark, and also, my one per list. Anyway, football manager sounds like a right laugh, right? Well, apparently China didn't get the joke, as they banned the game outright with a statement that the game was seen as a harm to the country's sovereignty and territorial integrity. Well, how did things get so, if you'll excuse the pun, messy? Yeah, that's a, that's a football joke for you there, I, I do watch it occasionally. Well, it's because the game treats Tibet and Taiwan as independent countries, and that is a no-fly zone for the Chinese government, who doesn't want anything suggesting such separation from the great nation. Therefore, they claimed independence from Football Manager 2005, and anyone found with a copy was fined thousands of pounds. That was until a revised version with Tibet back under Chinese rule was released, and the nation eventually relented. Number 8. EverQuest Released back in 1999, EverQuest was a jolly old romp through fantastical planes, combining RPG action with everyone's favourite thing, stats. As I just mentioned before in Football Manager, everyone loves it. And it was famously one of the first 3D MMORPGs to have reached mainstream success, and it's still supported by fans and modders to this day. However, while it might have captured the hearts of fans across the world, Brazil apparently wasn't so keen, banning the game because the game leads the player to a loss of moral virtue and takes them into to heavy psychological conflicts because of the game's quests. Okay, so let's just break that down for a second. So the government of Brazil, who, and this isn't just me being a pedant, has been reported multiple times of being pretty damn corrupt in places, is telling the people that this game about elves, knights, and the spirit of adventure would cause them to lose moral virtue. If anything, the game encouraged people to work together, which is the exact opposite of their reasoning. Although maybe I do have to give it to them a little, because it was heavily psychological when your f raid team couldn't get their act together. Yet the weirdness doesn't stop there, as this ban wasn't placed on the game when it first launched back in 1999, but in 2008, which seems to suggest that the government blames the game on any economic downturn that they've actually experienced. Mental. Number 7. Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell Pandora of Tomorrow the Splinter Cell games are something of a rare joy in today's environment, focusing on stealth and manipulation of game AI to take down targets and complete objectives. And you know what? Michael Ironside as Sam Fisher might well be one of my favourite combinations of voice actors and game characters, and say it with me, kids, in recent memory. Got you again. And with its plots of terrorist cells, subterfuge and corruption greater than this channel has since we allowed Josh to do voiceovers, it was only a matter of time before somebody found a problem with it. And that person was the Indonesian Prime Minister who banned the game in his country. However, if you think for a second that there was a rational thought behind this, then you're off the mark, friend. As it turns out that upon hearing that the fake terrorist group in the game was called Deradan Doa, which translates to blood and prayer, the Prime Minister thought that this was a direct attack against him. A personal attack. He thought that the game's devs made the title, built the franchise and fan base so in a sequel they could rib him through the title of a game. Surprisingly, the world went on just fine in the wake of this ban. Cuh, who would have figured? Number 6. Grand Theft Auto Episodes from Liberty City Oh, a Grand Theft Auto game, of course this is going to be banned in some countries, right? Well, true, it is a title that's been in more hot water than my mate Problematic Pete. He owns a hot tub warehouse. Well, it turns out that Brazil, hello my old friend again, didn't like the game so it pulled it from the shelves. Yet this time their reasoning was a little bit more sound, if not totally bat balls mental. It all came down to copyright infringement, and more importantly a sample of a song whose name I'll now butcher, Boto O Dedino's Pro Alto. 
How English did I sound reading that out? Which was used in a mission without permission. The ongoing legal battle between Rockstar and the song's artist meant that all copies were pulled from shelves in Brazil, and it was threatened to go even further than that because when Rockstar produced papers allowing them access to the song, it turned out that the signatures on it weren't from the track artist or their representatives. This threatened to blow out of control with a worldwide removal, but since this point, Rockstar have somehow managed to quiet the storm. Hmm. Number 5. Mega Man 5 Bless the blue bomber, eh? He's a cheeky little whippet, bouncing around, cleaning up messes in his game and unplugging machines all over the place like a maniac in a nursing home. What harm could he possibly cause anyone? I mean, sure, he's dealing with some quite stacked odds, but nothing super offensive, right? Well, in Vietnam, Mega Man was actually fed a big old ban because of a rather understandably questionable name for one of the robot masters, Napalm Man. And if your knowledge about Vietnam, the Vietnam War, and the use of its devastating substance isn't up to date, I'm pretty sure you can piece it together by combining the three previous statements. So it seems pretty obvious that Capcom should have just changed the name of the robot and gone ahead with things, right? Well, that's when it becomes bizarre, as they didn't. In fact, they refused to change the name and just accepted the ban. This has led many to believe that the case wasn't so simple, and in fact, Napalm Man's entire stage was based on Vietnam itself, which would explain the tiger-themed bots and other environmental cues. Number 4. Dead Rising if you've never been to Germany, then I would encourage you to do so. It's a lovely country with amazing food, an outstanding book fair, and foam-topped beers that even I could drink, and trust me, I've bloody well tried. However, they've got some understandable reservations when it comes to their country's past, and therefore anything with content bordering on the Nazi is often banned. Dead Rising, as far as I'm aware, was not one of these games, yet the entire franchise has never been allowed to be sold within Germany because of its violence towards, and I quote, human-like enemies. Now let's break this down for a second, because you'll see how weird it is when we do. They don't state that there is a problem with the violence towards other survivors and non-infected, as they state human-like enemies. However, they do have a problem with you taking out zombies in over-the-top and totally not realistic ways. Are we seeing the rise of the zombie rights activists that ironically make up the opening of the second game? Who knows, but neither will the Germans as their large gaming market is 100% Frank West free. Number 3. Injustice Gods Among Us if there's one thing that the United Arab Emirates like, it's women with clothes on and respect for their religion. And one thing that they apparently hated was Injustice Gods Among Us, which caused issues with the government because of the title including the word God, and also because the female fighters in the game were seen as too provocative. What makes this bizarre, though, is that the game was actually shown off at that year's Comic Con in Dubai, in which players queued for hours to play the title. Companies within shopping malls across the area received numerous complaints that they were unable to purchase the game, despite being able to play it, and unfortunately Warner Bros weren't allowed to officially release the title in the UAE. It's a shame for many just having a taste of what many praise as one of the best fighting game narratives ever put to disc. Number 2. Command & Conquer Generals Oh, it's China back again, this time looking to wipe Command & Conquer Generals off the face of their beautiful nation. The problem that they had with the title was fairly simple, and that it painted their country in a negative light, and also showed the superpower using nuclear weapons to deal with their enemy, the GLA. Now, on the surface, this sounds fairly reasonable, right? Any nation looking to dominate another runs the risk of being painted as the bad guys. However, if they'd looked at the plot of this game, then it would become apparent that the Chinese are forced into action after a terrorist attack sees a nuclear weapon detonated during a military parade. In the game, they're treated as an allied force, working with the US to take down the terrorists, and also they're seen as a mega power nation with technology far in advance of the rest of the world, and with a military force that is not to be sniffed at. If any think the game praises the same militaristic superiority that the nation itself boasts in real life. However, this was not enough to stop the game receiving a ban and sending generals back to the boot camp. And number one, Mark Echoes getting up contents under pressure. Jeez, what a mouthful of a title that is, right? Well, for those of you willing to look beyond its wordy box art, you'll find a surprisingly brilliant title about a graffiti artist named Train who is helping to overthrow a dictatorship through mad tags and the like. It might sound weird, and to be honest it kind of is, but it's actually really heartfelt and the sound and aesthetics of this game really work in its favour. Yet this message of hope within a repressed society didn't get a chance to air in Australia because their government suppressed it. Well, I mean, the irony is quite rich there, isn't it? It turns out that the game was banned 
banned because the government was worried that the title would inform other players how to actually tag and ruin their lovely boroughs with bad art, and the evidence for this was testimonies from real-life artists being used in the game. As you'd expect, there was an uproar about this within the gaming community, and Atari, the publishers of the game, appealed for the ban to be lifted, yet the response was a firm no, leaving Mark Echo himself bewildered how Need for Speed, a game which glorified illegal street racing, was rated G by the same governmental board. If you want a bizarre reason to go shopping, then go to shop.whatculture.com for more of my terrible comedy printed on t-shirt form so you can look as silly and as bold and as laughable as I do on a daily basis. Anyway, as always, I've been Jules. You can go follow me at RetroJ with a zero over on Twitter. You've been awesome, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye!